in this message, I want to alert you about something that many don't consider something to be alert about. Especially if you just came out of baby Christianity, this is something you need to be reformed out of. Beware and watch out, or better said, watch out for street preachers. Now there are those on the streets carrying signs and they think they're doing the right thing for Christ. And there are those that are indeed doing the right thing for Christ and they reach people and people's lives are changed for the better, so it happens. But understand the context here. When Christ told his disciples over 2000 years ago to go on the roads and to preach the gospel, just look at the context, okay? They lived in the Roman Empire. He had roads across the Mediterranean, uh, Mediterranean uh, lands, across Europe. You had um, maritime trade routes. So you had a whole economic system worldwide centered around Rome. You didn't have any internet back then. You didn't have any uh, mass printing press. You didn't have any of that. And communication was slow. Because communication by land, if they didn't have any false horses, it took days for a message to arrive. And by ship, things were faster, but you had a lot of storms on the Mediterranean. And also, if you wanted to leave Europe and go to the Americas, well, you had to watch out how you sailed. So, for the disciples, or say the apostles who reached the human population, they had to go on the roads. That's the only way you could reach people back then. If you had the product and you wanted to sell it, you could start your own shop somewhere in some town. But how do you get customers? You would send, you would hire people, or you would send your slaves to go around and shout on the streets that you're selling a great product. When you go to certain marketplaces today, it still happens that way. You have a lot of stands on a marketplace and everyone is shouting to go and buy the products. For example, you can have someone that, that sells oranges and says, oranges, one euro, oranges, one euro over here, very cheap, very delicious, oranges, one euro, something like that. That's how it was at that time. It was the only way for them to do it. And they needed to supernaturally be able to speak languages they didn't understand because you didn't have Google Translate back then. You didn't have that many interpreters. And you had the ancient Greek language, which was the common language that people used, just like English. English is a common language today in, fine, in, a, in the financial and economic world. But overall, people still spoke the native languages. And the disciples, the, the apostles, didn't have the time to learn all the languages of the world. So supernaturally, they spoke in tongues. That means in other existing human languages and dialects. There were unknown tongues in which they spoke heavenly language, but besides that, they spoke, supernaturally spoke languages they didn't understand. Why was it needed to reach the human population? Now today, scriptures translated in all languages, you have the internet in which people can even watch videos and investigate things. So in, a, in the state of the world today, it's still necessary to go on the roads and shouting to people that they need to find Christ. Well, it isn't. And here's another thing I want to point out to you. When Christ went on the roads and, it, and he preached the gospel, he said, repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. Or repent because the kingdom of God has come there. He never said, oh, oh, woe unto you. You're a filthy sinner. You're about to go to the lake of fire because you deserve it so badly. You're a piece of trash. You deserve to be tortured for all eternity. But if you want to prevent that, I could say this prayer, join a church building and go there every weekend your whole life and maybe you'll make it. Christ never preached that. That's garbage. That's not the gospel. When Christ himself preached his kingdom, he said, repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent is turn around because the kingdom is at hand. Now look at this. You had the Roman Empire that dominated the world back then. That was the kingdom of the world. And you had those smaller kingdoms here and there. You had the Chinese Empire, the uh, Korean kingdoms, you had the, 
I believe he had some the Olmec Empire also in the Americas with the Indians. So you had they already had their kingdom or kingdoms, but then Christ said the kingdom is at hand. So what this point making clear with that statement is that all these kingdoms that you have around you are counterfeit. The real kingdom is here. So Christ always pointed to life in abundance. How come that you have many of those people going around today on the streets and they're pointing onto debt while they claim to agree with Christ? What? Many of those street preachers, I'm not saying all of them, but many of them are agents used by the enemy to put people in fear. That's what they're doing. Christ never went around decreeing doom on people. Now, there were times he put judgments on people. Don't get me wrong. He's Lord. He's just. But he never went around just proclaiming doom on people. The reprobates are doomed anyway because they persist in the negative. So they, they, they bring it on themselves. But Christ did not spend all his male energy as human being on the reprobates. Yes, he did address reprobates when appropriate. He addressed the scribes and Pharisees. And, and he addressed... Um, the pagan taxation system and all of that. But they always point to life and abundance. So watch out for street preachers. Many of them are agents from the shadow government directly. They're not even believers. They don't, they don't even want anything to do with Christ, but they're just there to put fear into people. To sow seeds of fear. Because fear blinds your perception. So you can't see things clearly. And fear keeps you in addiction and in very dysfunctional behaviors. And also watch out for online ministries. Please, if anyone does not vindicate nor honor the resurrection of Christ and the resurrection power, it's garbage. If it's all about modifying people's behavior, whether it's sexual behavior or financial behavior or social behavior, if it's all about behavior modification, it's garbage. When once you preach life and abundance and people begin to walk in life and abundance, you don't even have to worry about behavior modification anymore because you walk in the life and the abundance itself. So health, wealth, all of that will follow automatically. Didn't Christ say, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you? Yes, you are active and while you are active in his righteousness, that means in walking by faith, all these other things are added unto you. That's life and abundance. But that's not what many street preachers are preaching and shouting in the streets. And that's not what many of those online ministries are teaching either. They are infecting you with fear and anxiety. But they do it in the name of Christ. I'm telling you, stay away from them as much as possible. Don't sponsor them. Be at peace.